I've been asked to talk about Ernest Hemingway's activities uh, leading up to the liberation of Paris. Now, from the First World War through the 1950s to his death in 1961, Ernest Hemingway was the most interesting man in the world. Don't, don't believe those Dos Equis commercials. <laughs> w wounded in action in Italy in World War I, he, he was given a Medal of Valor by the Italian government for carrying a wounded Italian soldier on his back after receiving 227 pieces of shrapnel in his leg after an Austrian trench mortar attack. He moved to Paris and was one of the leading lights of, uh, of the, the, the lost generation of Paris, rubbing elbows with Fitzgerald and, and Picasso and James Joyce. He ran with the bulls in Pamplona. He moved to Key West. He, he did uh, big game hunting in Africa and, and fished for the biggest fish in the Gulf Stream. He risked his life in Spain covering the Spanish Civil War. Uh, in World War II, he organized a counter-espionage and intelligence ring in Havana and also hunted for submarines, uh, German U-boats, uh, along the uh, Cuban coast. As, as we, we saw, he uh, took part in, um, as Sean Hemingway mentioned, he took part in the Normandy landings, covering the landings at bloody Omaha Beach. And uh, he, he always put himself out there. He was a man of action. Now, in August of 1944, as the Allied forces are heading into, uh, into Paris, Hemingway was attached to an OSS unit along with Colonel David Bruce. And the OSS's function in, in France at this time was to coordinate uh, the uh, French resistance efforts and to give support to them. Because of a lack of leadership, Ernest Hemingway actually ended up uh, nominally in charge of a, a group of about 50, 60, 70 French partisans, uh, members of the French resistance. Now, he wasn't supposed to get involved in combat, but he actually did near the town of Rambouillet, and he got into a little bit of trouble with the uh, Army Office of Inspector General, but uh, fortunately, he was clear to those charges. But the men had great respect for Hemingway, and they would say to him, how is it with such great military leadership and knowledge and skills, you only rose to the level of captain? They called him Capitan. And he said, it's because I never learned to read or write. <laughs> but here on August 25th, 1944, you find Hemingway and, and David Bruce and his ragtag band of uh, French resistance troops heading into Paris. And first they stopped at the Travelers Club, where they where they had a champagne toast, but he wanted to head straight for the Ritz, Ritz Paris. He wrote later, when I dream of an afterlife in heaven, the, the action always play, takes place at the Paris Ritz. It's a fine summer night. I knock back a couple of martinis in the bar. Then there's a wonderful dinner under a flowering chestnut tree in what is called Le Petit Jardin. After a few brandies, I wander up to my room and slip into one of those huge Ritz beds. They're all made of brass. There's a bolster for my head the size of a Graf Zeppelin and four square pillows filled with real goose feathers, two for me and two for my quite heavenly companion. But on this day, Hemingway marched into the Ritz Paris with his gang of uh, built band of brothers of the French resistance, and the imperturbable Aziello, the manager of the Ritz, bows and says, what can we bring for you, Monsieur Hemingway? He said, we would like 57 martini cocktails, please. So Ernest Hemingway, the most interesting man in the world, had liberated the Ritz Paris. <laughs> so let's make that martini. This was one of his favorite, favorite drinks. He liked them very dry and very strong. You know, he loved vermouth in general, but he didn't like much of it in his martini. In fact, he, um, he wanted his martini to be 15 parts gin to one part vermouth. Now, as a commentary on British Field Marshal Bernard, Mon Mon Bernard Law Montgomery, affectionately known as Monty, he called it the Montgomery Martini because, in his view, Mar Montgomery had to have a 15 to 1 troop advantage before he committed them into battle. <laughs> but he was also fanatical about making his martinis very cold. He wanted them ice cold. He froze his glasses. He made ice out of giant tennis ball cans, or made giant ice cubes out of tennis ball cans at 15 degrees below zero. He froze his Spanish cocktail onions at 15 degrees below zero. He said the drink was so cold it stuck to your hands. He used Nwali Pratt gin and he used, I'm sorry, Nwali Pratt vermouth and he used Gordon's gin. Now this evening, I'm gonna use a different brand of gin made by my friend Simon Ford, who's an ardent admirer of uh, the OSS and Ian Fleming and others of that ilk. 
So we're going to use about a quarter of an ounce of the Nawali Pratt. According to Hemingway's recipe, you just wanted an ounce and three quarters of gin and just enough vermouth to cover the bottom of the glass. So we're going to use about an ounce and three quarters of the forged gin and just enough vermouth to cover the bottom of the glass. Now, one of his post-war biographers claimed that Hemingway was something of a martini addict, that he had a, campaign, a canteen of gin on one hip and a canteen of vermouth on the other. And Hemingway didn't like this at all. He said, can you imagine in wartime me wasting an entire canteen on vermouth? <laughs> this is for me, by the way. You all are on your own. Now, it brings to mind a quote attributed to Dorothy Parker. I love to drink a martini, two at the very most. Three, I'm under the table. Four, I'm under the host. Or as the immortal George Burns said, happiness is a dry martini and a good woman, or a bad woman. <laughs> you all look thirsty out there, so I'll wrap it up. So I chilled the glass. You want a nice cold glass? Now ordinarily, I would garnish this with a, fran a frozen Spanish cocktail onion which I had up here earlier, but somebody took it. But uh, <laughs> Hemingway also liked olives, so I will raise a glass to Ernest Hemingway in Paris, and I will offer one more of my favorite quotes of his. Always do sober what you said you'd do drunk. This will teach you to keep your mouth shut. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>